I'm Danny K. White of AslobChemsClean.com and author of Organizing for the Rest of Us. And I'm gonna talk about my number one strategy for busting through my very best housekeeping excuses. My very best super logical reasons, or honestly, super logical reason, my best reason for putting off some sort of a task that I just really don't wanna do, okay? My number one reason, I don't have time right now. I've got too much going on. I'm too busy, too many things to do. I don't have time to stop and do bleh, whatever thing it is that I know is gonna have to be done, but I'm just like, I'm, I don't have time to do it right now. And then I don't do it right now, and then generally it turns into a bigger problem in the future. So my number one strategy, what is it? Time the task. Time the task. Take the time, I mean, a lot of you are actually watching on a smartphone or a tablet or something right now that has a timer option on it. So there's no like, go out and buy a stopwatch. You've got a stopwatch already, most of you, on what you're watching this video on. So using a stopwatch, timing how long it takes me to do something that I really don't enjoy doing is my number one best excuse buster because then I know for sure then I know how long it actually takes to do this thing that I don't want to do, but that needs to be done consistently. <sighs> and then in the future, it really does eliminate my best excuses. So many times when I think I don't have time to, bleh, I know for a fact, actually that thing that I don't want to do, it takes like one minute or it takes four minutes or it takes 15 minutes or whatever. But knowing how long it actually takes means I can't pretend that I don't have time when I actually do have time. And knowing how long it takes versus knowing that it took a really long time before when I used to put off doing these things, then I know, okay, it's worth it to do one minute worth of work now to not have a huge frustration that is hours worth of work later. So what are some examples of this? I'm gonna give you some examples. But before I do, I wanna make sure that you understand a special little term that I and so many of my people, so glad you're here, uh, use. And it's a term that I made up. Some people say that there's actually like scientific terms that mean similar things. I say I have TPAD, Time Passage Awareness Disorder. I have this thing that means that I have a really hard time estimating time. So if it's something I don't wanna do, I tend to estimate that it's gonna take so long that I couldn't possibly do it right now. If it's something I do want to do, I tend to think, oh, that'll just take a minute. I've got plenty of time to do that. And in reality, it actually, you know, it's gonna be a huge lengthy thing that I'm doing. So this strategy of timing tasks really helps me with my time passage awareness disorder, my TPAD. Made up by me, some people say it's real, whatever. I made up that word, all right? Number one thing that got me started on doing this, this was advice from my mom, uh, was emptying the dishwasher. You can time the whole cleaning the kitchen process, you can time doing the dishes, but emptying the dishwasher or the dish drainer, if you hand washed your dishes and had them air dry on a drainer, that task is the one that I hated the most, and so I put it off the most, and it's also the one that grinds everything to a halt as far as a routine of dishes that will keep my kitchen under control, okay? If I don't empty the dishwasher or the dish drainer, then, first of all, with the dish drainer, my kitchen just doesn't look clean. Even if I've cleaned it, it still looks a little like, oh, something's undone. It's that, that's what it is, okay? With the dishwasher, and the dish drainer, if I don't empty those, then when it's time to do dishes, I have something else to do first, which then makes me put off doing the dishes because I've got to first deal with this thing before I can do that. Specifically for this video, I timed myself doing the dishwasher because I would put off emptying the dishwasher, which meant that dirty dishes couldn't go straight in the dishwasher, which meant that dirty dishes went into the sink which meant that then it was a big thing to then load the dishwasher later because I first had to empty the dishwasher and then load it, okay? And it was cleaning up a mess where when I can get the dishwasher emptied regularly, ideally first thing in the morning, then throughout the day I can put dirty dishes in there and I never have a pile up in my sink. 
See what I'm saying? So it makes it so much easier. It makes the flow of the routine go. And yet I kept putting it off because I just despised it so much. And my mom said, you know, um, you should probably time that because it actually, you know, it actually doesn't really take, it actually doesn't really take that long. So just time it and see four minutes, y'all four minutes, knowing that means that even though I still don't feel like emptying the dishwasher, I am so much more likely to go and yet it's four minutes and it's going to make everything run more smoothly in my house. I have to do this. Okay. So I'm less likely to avoid this task. It busts through my amazing excuse of, I just don't have enough time. All right. Another one is putting a new trash bag in the trash can. I don't know why I despise that so much. And yet I do. Here's how long it takes to do that. And yet I could justify putting it off because I felt like I just don't have the time. Right. And then there's a big one. This is my shower. We moved into this house in November of 21. I am filming this in August of 22. Okay. So we've been here like nine months. And when I first moved in, uh, some friends saw my glass shower and they were like, Oh no, how are you going to keep that clean? Oh, those things get soaked because we have hard water here. And so I know from experience, I used to have a glass shower door at our old house before we redid the bathroom. And then I had a shower curtain. Um, but I have, I knew how easily soap scum can build up and then be a huge daunting job to deal with a really disgusting and ugly mess. Like I knew from experience that that was reality. So I said, okay, I'm going to do things different. I'm going to do them differently here. And I got myself a squeegee and I talked to my husband. We're the only two that use this shower. And I said, okay, we got to do this again. This was my mom's. This is what she does in her house. Every single shower, every single shower, we have to squeegee the two walls that are, you know, kind of daunting. And I really don't feel like doing that. Y'all, I never feel like doing it. I always am irritated about doing it, but I know that this short task, which I know is a short task because I've timed it is going to eliminate an embarrassing mess. Like I wouldn't feel like anybody could see my bathroom if it was covered in soap scum the way that it would be if I hadn't been doing this every single time we take a shower. Okay. So my husband and I both are committed to every single time we take a shower, we use the squeegee. Okay. So here you go. Here's an example of how long that takes with me wearing shorts and t-shirt. But anyway, this is a reenactment as in it is not actually after a shower, but it is after me running the water, the hot water, but it is after me running the hot water long enough that it got all steamed the way that it does for a shower. Okay. So it took me one minute and I think six seconds to squeegee my shower. And doing that means it has never gotten gross. It always looks clean and nice and beautiful. And I'm just telling you, it's, it's awesome. It does get cleaned every two weeks, but this is the end of the two weeks. Okay. So like it's going to be cleaned again day after tomorrow. So this is the end of the two weeks. This is yeah, what it looks like because I squeegee it every single time. Uh, now I do, if somebody else in our family uses our shower or says that they want to use our shower, I give a big long speech about you can, but you have to squeegee it. You can't not squeegee it. You have to squeegee the shower. Um, and here's the thing too, that time from timing it today, I'm just telling you, I was in a really bad mood. I'm kind of still in a bad mood, but anyway, I was in a really bad mood when I did that. I didn't want to do it. I didn't feel like I was hitting it just right. I had to go back over a couple spaces where I've kind of got a rhythm and routine down that helps me, I think probably even go faster than that. But this was on a day where I was in a bad mood. I didn't feel like it was working great and I had to go back over a couple spots and it still only took me a minute and six seconds. Knowing that eliminates my excuse of, I just don't have the time because it's going to eliminate spending a huge amount of time and hassle and frustration in the future cleaning up if I don't do that. And finally, I talk about awkward pauses, awkward, capital A pauses, capital P 
Awkward pauses, they are a thing. You have them in your day at any random time. Knowing how long certain tasks take, emptying the dishwasher, loading the dishwasher, cleaning off the bathroom counter, all those little things that need to be done consistently. If I know how long they take, it just breaks through my tea pad and my very best excuses and helps me get more done more often, which means it doesn't get out of control, which means, okay, my house is one that's easier to live in and I like it. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Let me know what tasks you have timed, what tasks you put off all the time that you think I should probably time that. Let me know how long it takes. I wanna hear. I wanna get your crowd information on other types of things that you can time. Okay, I will talk to you later. Bye.